throughout the world, the most powerful predictor of the homicide rate is the degree of inequality between the rich and the poor, the uh, uh, gap between the rich and the poor. Um, the United States, as I mentioned, has the highest gap uh, in the, the industrialized world. South Africa uh, uh, has as high a gap as any other country in the world and the highest murder rates. Um, the countries of Western Europe have the greatest degree of equality, uh, the lowest degree of inequality, and the lowest murder rates in the world. Um, now, why would that be? In terms of the psychology of shame, I think it's very clear. People who are poor are at the bottom of the social and economic status system. Um, the, the more uh, materialistic a society, and I think to some extent the more developed, economically developed it is, uh, the more a person's feeling of self-worth is dependent on what accountants call their net worth. That is the amount of wealth, you know, assets minus liabilities. Um, people are more respected and treated with more respect when they have more wealth. Um, for example, honorary degrees uh, in universities are often given to people who have a lot of money and have given a lot of money to the university. They, people are honored you know, when they have wealth. When they're poor, they're often uh, regarded as failures, or they regard themselves as, as failures. So I'm going to suggest that, uh, that we know a lot about what causes violence, and we know a lot about how we could prevent it, but we have lacked the political will to bring about changes in our society that would, uh, uh, would help. Um, so I want to talk, I'm just going to quickly review the, uh, the, the form, the, the different concepts of violence prevention. And I'm borrowing this from uh, preventive medicine. Um, primary prevention in, in, in medicine, one example of it would be cleaning up the water supply and the sewer system. That's what John Snow did in London in the 1850s when he discovered that a polluted well was causing a epidemic of cholera. The way to stop the epidemic was provide people with unpolluted water. I'd say the equivalent of that with violence is to clean up our social and economic system by creating a society in which there is much more equality of opportunity uh, for education, for employment, for earning an income, uh, and, and so forth. Um, and uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, many people in this room know much more than I do about how one might go about doing that in a society. Um, but uh, I'm saying that until we do that, we are, a, a lot of our preventive approaches are, are, are just bound to be inadequate. Um, secondary prevention in medicine would be treating somebody who's at risk of a disease before they've actually got, become ill. Like, uh, giving somebody drugs to lower their blood pressure before they, before they have a stroke. The equivalent in violence would be the kind of thing that the Rand Corporation did in an experiment in Los Angeles, where they took two neighborhoods, both of which were identical kind of socioeconomically, poverty-stricken, crime-ridden, uh, filled with, often with unwed teenage mothers and so forth. And in one of those neighborhoods, they provided prenatal counseling when an unmarried teenage girl was going to have a baby. Then after the baby was born, they would make home visits with social workers and visiting nurses to provide counseling about how to raise a child and, and so forth. Um, they provided preschool education for the, for the children starting at the earliest possible age. When the children started school, they would give them an allowance for attending school, because otherwise these kids tend to can play hooky most of the time and, and not finish. So that with this group, they would finish high school and often go on to college. Um, they found that not only did this reduce the rates of child abuse tremendously compared with the control group uh, in a similar neighborhood that didn't have these services, but that also rates of juvenile delinquency, uh, adult crime, and so forth were so much lower that this program, uh, which after all costs money, 
was actually saving the taxpayers $4 for every dollar spent on it because it is so expensive to take care of things after somebody has become violent.